This video is about likely voters, one of the biggest issues that political pollsters are dealing with all over the world. If you live in Australia, not a problem, everybody votes. But if you're living in a place like the United States, Canada, Britain, France, uh, only people who are interested in the campaign tend to vote. So what you need to figure out as a political pollster is which group of voters is actually going to show up on election day. When a pollster comes to you with a poll and says, they've uh, gone out and interviewed the population about uh, how they're going to vote in the election campaign. The first question you need to ask them is, is this the general population? Is this everybody in the population? Is it eligible voters, people who have registered to vote, people who are qualified to vote? Is it them or is it likely voters? People who are all of these things, but also showing the most interest to actually participate in the campaign and they actually say that they're going to show up. You'll tend to get three very different numbers for those three categories. So you need to find out what it is that the pollster is showing you. Now, how do you deal with non-voters? Because, you know, in a place like where I am today, Canada, half the population doesn't vote. So we know 50% of the people that we interview in a general population survey are actually lying to us. So how do we take the people who are the actual voters and actually interview them? Well, we have a couple different ways of doing it. One of them is we screen people out who, ha who say that they have no interest in voting. You can do it at the start of the questionnaire. Or you can interview the general population and you can remove people who are unlikely voters afterwards. You have to find out which uh, your pollster has done. Have they screened people out, didn't even interview people who are non-voters, or did they include them so they could look at them in the survey results as well? But what you're ultimately looking for is that group of the population that you could describe as true voters, the people who are actually going to vote, the people the day after the election campaign you know actually voted. Uh, there's a couple of things that you can do to zero in on who, the, who those true voters are. One of them is historical vote weighting. So you can go back and you can look at what happened in previous uh, election campaigns to try and sort out what the likely turnout is in, this, in the election campaign that you're doing polling on. So if you found out that only 50% of the voters voted last time around, the likelihood that 75% of the population is actually going to vote is probably untrue. So you have to figure out a way of weighting that out. The next thing you have to figure out is whether you've adequately represented each of the party's likely voters or each of the candidates likely voters in the sample. Sometimes going back and looking at how people performed well or how they performed in the past will give you a good way of looking at that. The big problem that you can create though is if you can go into a change election campaign in which people are doing different sorts of things in an era of declining partisanship you tend to see a lot of that. Uh, waiting things back to the historical vote can mute the change. The other thing that can happen is if you have new parties emerge, say for example in the European parliamentary elections, we saw a lot of parties of the right have big performances. That's difficult to get if what you're doing is comparing it to the last European parliamentary elections because you'll, you'll tend to mute that impact. So you really have to have your pollster explain to you how they're dealing with history and things like screening in or removing afterwards. Another model for removing uh, voters from the sample is a behavioral model level of interest in the campaign, whether or not they voted in the past, whether they're likely to vote this time, maybe even asking them a couple of skill testing questions about where they're supposed to vote will help determine whether or not they're actually a voter and whether or not they're going to, they're going to uh, show up in the campaign. Now, these types of behavioral models can perform very well, but there's been a couple of really good examples in which they've beha behaved quite poorly. So you want to uh, make sure that you understand what the pollster is doing with these behavioral models, and you want to look at the historical record, whether or not it's worked in the past. It's a good way of starting out your questioning. But ultimately, even if you do all of this stuff right, if your sample is biased, this isn't going to fix it. You have to start off with a good sample that's representative of the overall population and then ultimately of the voting population. So for example, if you're doing uh, IVR or robocall type polls and you know that women are overwhelmingly more likely to answer the phone, okay, well you can correct for that demographically, but what if it's women who are likely to vote in a certain way are more likely to answer the phone? Well, it's a lot harder to fix that demographically. So you, uh, you run the risk of a situation in which you have a sample bias and which some of the methods that you can apply to determine likely voters will actually make the representation of the voting population worse. This all sounds relatively complicated, I know, but I know also that if you don't ask these questions, 
you could end up publishing survey results that could be quite biased and not well representing, uh, not doing a good job of representing what's actually happening in the election campaign. Because ultimately, it's not a problem to ask questions. You always have a right to know. This is a work in progress, but asking these questions will make that progress even better. If you want to know more about survey research methods, particularly when it comes to things that journalists should be asking, follow me on Twitter. Here's my Twitter address.